Hey everybody, this is Laurie Meyer from stampedgreetings.com and you are in a stamp club meeting. For those of you who were not able to be here tonight, we miss you and hopefully you will be able to feel like you were and are part of this meeting by checking out the recording. And you may hear some folks talking in the background and if you do, enjoy the conversation. We'll have questions, comments, and all sorts of fun thing. And that will, again, make you feel like you're part of the group. Tonight, we're going to do kind of an, a different thing. And what I mean by that is the first card that I'm going to show you is a quick one. And this is something that I am absolutely casing, completely casing. It is one that was originally done by Jamie Babarski. I hope I have said her last name correctly. I will put a link into the original video when I post this on YouTube. And it's just a really cool fun fold. It's nice because it uses some designer series paper, very cool little angle in the front, and then opens up so you have a place to write your message. This was shared on a blog hop that I participated in this past weekend. And I decided that I wanted to case the case of the card. Uh, the blog hop was uh, Tina Lesson, was the lady who actually posted her version of this card. And I decided, I like it, I wanna make one. So this is the card that I made. And then I decided that I wanted to go one step further. And that's the difference. We're actually gonna talk about how you can case a card and then change it into something that's a little different but a lot of what you use in the, your version is based on the original. And this is one that I decided I wanted to make completely out of designer series paper. And it's pretty much the same. It's a lot thinner than the one that I just showed you. And I'll show you how I figured out how to make this. And it's very straightforward as well. We're going to get started on this one. It is a very, very straightforward card to do. And the way that you begin is you're going to need a piece of cardstock, whatever color you would like. And we are going to start with a piece that it's a little bit of a, a different measurement. I'm going to bring it out here. It is 11 by five and a half. So 11 by five and a half. And the reason it's five and a half is we're gonna end up making it into kind of a trifold and it will be a standard A2 to go into a regular envelope. So that's why we've got the five and a half. And then by scoring, we're going to get to the four and a quarter. So we're gonna to get to the normal A2 size card, but you're gonna start with 11 by five and a half. So you're gonna have a scrap left of your cardstock don't throw that away because you'll be able to use that on another project. But um, on this card, you probably won't need it unless you use it for part of your sentiment. Grab your scoring board after you have that piece cut and you are going to make two score lines. The first one is going to be at four and a quarter. So I'm just gonna take my stylus and score it four and a quarter. The second one is going to be at eight and a half. Those are the only two score lines that you're going to need on this card base. And then you can go ahead and take your piece of paper out of your scoring board. And the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to make a little cut. I'm gonna bring back the card that I finished and I'm going to line it up so that it is mirroring where these score lines are. So I'm lying this piece of paper the same way that this one is. And you're going to see that what we need to do on this end is we need to make a cut and it's going to be a diagonal cut top to bottom. And let me show you how you do that. I did mention to folks who are on this call that they would need a ruler and a pencil. And I'm gonna grab my good eraser, not the one that's on the end of my pencil because I may want to erase my 
pencil marks after. And I want you to orient the paper so that the way you're looking at it is this is your four and a quarter inch score line. This is your eight and a half inch score line. And you're going to take your ruler and you're going to go one inch from the eight and a half inch score line and just put a little mark at the top of the paper. So just a little mark so you know where you need to cut. And then I'm going to put this paper into my paper trimmer. And what I want to do, if I line up this ruler, is I want to make a cut that's going to go from that little tick mark down to this bottom corner. And the way to do that, and it's pretty easy, if you get your paper trimmer, is you're going to line up that tick mark in the, the little, um, what am I gonna call that? A little trellis, a little where the blade goes. So I've got that tick mark right where the blade is going to go. And then I have the point down at the bottom, right where the blade is going to go. I'm going to cut from the top. I never cut into a point because sometimes the, the blade is going to cut into that and it will make it a little wonky in shape. So I'm just gonna put that down on my trimmer and cut that. And now I have this, this piece. The piece that I'm holding in my right hand is scrap. You can use that on another project, but you're definitely not going to use it on this one. And then we're gonna do a little bit of burnishing because this is our card base. And I'm just going to go ahead and burnish the sides. It will fold so that the piece that we cut is going to fold in from the left and the longer this part is gonna be on the bottom. And I'm going to fold this over as well. Now, one thing you probably will find is when you have burnished these and you try to close them, you're not gonna be able to do that incredibly well. And the reason is the distance, the width on this piece is four and a quarter. The distance between these score lines is four and a quarter. And then you're folding this over the front. So it's not, it's gonna be really snug. So, you're gonna to need to get your score, your cutting board out one more time and just take a sliver, a sliver, sliver off of this edge. And again, if I orient the paper, this is where I did the four and a quarter score line. This is the eight and a half. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna turn mine kind of upside down and you do not need much. I don't know if you can see it, but in the paper trimmer that I have, where the white begins on that ruler. I'm just gonna get my paper about over to that white and I'm just gonna shave off. It's not even a 16th of an inch. It's just a little, little bit from that edge. And then what you're going to find is that the card base is going to work a lot better. So I'm just gonna flip it because it's going to look like this. We're gonna have this section going in the middle and then we're gonna have that going over the side. And now it fits really well. So by taking that teeny little sliver out, you're going to be all set. All right, so that's, that's our card base. Now we're going to start building some of the layers. So we've got designer series paper that we're working with. In my case, I've got some basic white that I'm going to put in for where I will write my greeting and then we'll get to the finishing touches in a little bit. I had to use this amazing paper that is retiring. I saw that in the list for the last chance or the retiring products that this paper is going to be slightly on sale. I think it's a 30% discount if I'm not mistaken. It is gorgeous. It's called Masterfully Made. And if you don't have any of this, I just strongly recommend that you think about getting some because 
The colors are beautiful. The photography that goes into making it is stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning. So to put the next layers on, we're going to be dealing with some designer series paper. And then for me, I'm going to frame them in basic white. I'm going to do this one first. We'll get to this one in just a second. So for this piece, the white or whatever color you're going to use for your frame, this is going to measure four inches by five and a quarter. So again, four inches by five and a quarter. And then this piece is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. It's just an eighth of an inch thinner and less tall than this piece. So you're gonna end up with a really nice frame around your designer series paper. And where we're going to put this is if we, again, we bring back the example, it's going to go on this first piece that flips in from the right. So if I bring my card base out, it's going to be on here. And what I like to do is I like to get as little distraction as I can when I'm putting something on. So I know it's gonna go on here, right? Because if I have my card like this and I fold it in, I want to put it on here. I'm just gonna open it up so that I can see a little bit more of what I'm actually doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the frame color first on my cardstock or my card base. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue, don't need a lot, and get that as centered as I can and put that on. This is a really cool design for using designer series paper. One of the things about this card and one of the reasons that I really wanted to make a very similar design in designer series paper is because the card that we're making ends up being kind of thick. You have three layers of cardstock in some places, then you have basic white, you have some more designer series paper that you're dealing with, and by the time you get it done, you could be dealing with, you know, it could be a little tricky-ish to convince it to go into an envelope and, and kind of stay closed. If you're not ooing and eyeing when you're looking at this paper, I need to talk to you because I think this is gorgeous. All right, while we're here, so we just did this panel. While we're here, we're gonna put our middle piece on. That's going to be where we or I will write my message. And what I use was just plain old basic white. This basic white piece is the same size as the basic white piece that is the frame. So again, the size for this is going to be four inches by five and a quarter. So four inches wide, five and a quarter high. And since I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this piece on as well. And this would look really nice with some stamped image or maybe even a, a extra piece of the designer series paper to pull that color in. One thing that you might wanna think about, although it would add a little bit more layering, is adding some color over here or a stamp over here, an image, just to give the inside a little bit more than what we have right now. Okay, so to finish off this card, we need to cover this section. And we're going to use two pieces of paper to do that. Do not adhere these together yet because each of these is going to need to be cut because they're going to go on top of this piece. And remember how we cut that so that it has the slant. We're gonna make these slanted as well. The measurement for the frame, again, basic weight for me, is two and a quarter by five and a quarter. 
So two and a quarter wide, five and a quarter high. And you'll remember that the frame in the middle, the one that I'm just butting this up against is five and a quarter. So we're going with the same height. Obviously the width has to be different. So two and a quarter, five and a quarter. The designer series paper is two and an eighth by five and an eighth. And again, the designer series paper that we started with for the middle is five and an eighth and it's going to eventually have a really nice frame around. So two and an eighth, five and an eighth. But we need to do a little bit of trimming. And we're gonna grab our pencil and ruler one more time. And on the white piece, let me get the designer series paper out of the way. So on the white piece, we're just gonna go up to the top left of that piece of paper and put a tick mark for the cut. Just make sure I have my ruler straight. At seven eighths. So at seven eighths, I'm just gonna put a little bit of a mark. I'm gonna get that one out of the way. I wanna do both of the cuts at the same time. So this one, and I'll write it here because I'm gonna cut this part out. So seven eighths. And then on your designer series paper, make sure that you know what is you know vertical. If you have a pattern, there are words in here that I can see. So I'm just making sure that they're legible. I'm gonna go up to the upper right or upper left, sorry, corner of this. And the tick mark on this one is going to go at three quarters of an inch. Depending upon the colors you're dealing with your, with your designer series paper, you might need to make that a little dark. Don't worry, because you can uh, erase that later. So this one is at three quarters of an inch. This one is at seven eighths of an inch. And then get your paper trimmer again. And you're going to do the exact same thing for these pieces, meaning that when you line these up, you're going to put the tick mark right in that little crevice where the uh, where the blade is going to go and then you're going to bring the point of the bottom part the bottom right is going to go into that track as well just trying to line that up I'm gonna let that fall I'm going to cut from the top again this is extra so you can throw that away so we have the base and then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the designer series paper and this is where you might have to remind yourself where that pencil mark is and if you put it in your light you might be able to see it a little bit better I can see it you may not be able to see it on camera but I can see that I have that right in the track and I have the bottom right and I need to bring my blade up to the top and cut that. And then I have the second piece. This I'll probably keep even though it is scrap because who knows, I might be able to use that on something else. I'll get rid of my paper trimmer for right now. And then I'll bring these two pieces back in. When I put this piece on, I put the frame on first and then I put the designer series paper on. Because this is a little bit of a different shape, I'm not going to do it in that order. I'm actually going to put these together before I put it onto my card. And you'll see that it fits pretty well. I've got a nice border all the way around and I'm just gonna go ahead and glue those two pieces together. Any kind of adhesive will work. I prefer the liquid glue, especially when you have pieces like this where you might need to finagle them just a little bit to get things lined up the way you want. And when I put an odd piece together like this, I'm holding the right edge up. I'm not committing that to gluing down just yet. And I'm going to Look at all sides and try to get it 
fairly centered. And I think, I just love this paper. I absolutely love this paper. And then what we're going to do is take this combined piece and we're going to attach it here. Now, another thing, when I put this piece on, you'll remember that I opened up the card because it gave me a little bit less busyness to look at. Well, I'm not going to do that this time, and here's why. When I adhere this piece, I want to try to get the upper part of the white and the lower part of the white together. So I really kind of need to see this, and I'm going to close my card completely when I put this on. And again, just put a little bit of glue, and then do your best. You're your own worst critic. No one really is going to inspect what you're doing. And I kind of do one at a time. So I'm sort of doing that top first to see if I can get that pretty well lined up. And then I'm going to move it so it looks like the border is nice and straight. And there you go. Now, if you look at the video when I put it in the comments, you will notice that when Jamie made her initial card, she had two colors of cards to, of designer series paper. They were complementary, and it's up to you. I really just love this paper enough that I wanted it on all of the or on both of the flaps for the card. So let's talk about, you know, how you might want to finish. I'm not going to bore you to tears by stamping and doing die cutting. I'm going to jump to this is what I did and just talk a little bit about it. And then we're going to make the card out of the designer series paper using this model as our basis. So if you choose to put a die cut on the front on this flap, I'm telling you something you already know, but bear with me. Make sure that you only put whatever your adhesive is on the opposite side of this panel. You don't want to gush the glue over on anything that's exposed because then you're going to glue your card together. And you also want to be mindful of just the, the layers. This card isn't necessarily going to stay closed. There's just, there's a lot of paper that's going on. So be mindful of that when you do it as well. And then I decided to put a couple of little gems. These are, I think they're the ones, yes, they are these ones. The um, tinsel gems, I love these. They're just bright, cheerful, four different colors, very fun, added, added a real festive kind of look to this particular card. So I love this design, I truly do. And I appreciate that this has been shared and you know we, we now have the template to use and that's when my mind started racing. And this is one of the things that I enjoy doing the most. Oh, no. I enjoy seeing a card that I like no, and then taking it and just making it a little different you know, figuring out how I can change it up so that it's a little bit the way I want it to be. And when I looked at this card, I thought, I want to figure out how to make this with designer series paper. And that's what I did with this card. So I'm gonna transition to talking about how this card was made and how it's a little bit different. And it may or may not be really visible on the camera, but one thing is it's a lot thinner, the one on the right, the designer series paper. It is a lot thinner, but it's still substantial. It will stand up because there are layers and there's also folds that are going on that really keep the card together. And it's also made out of one piece of designer series paper. We'll do that in just a second. And 
it's kind of a shortcut. And I know I've said this before, but you know, we had to cut the designer series paper here. Here, you're just using it and you're using it as your card base and the colors that you want to add. So let's talk about this one and how I figured out how to make a couple of little changes so that this comes together pretty easily. 12 by 12 designer series paper. We all love it. We all hate cutting it. It is one of those where you, you just say, you know, hold your breath. I need to cut it. I bought this paper. I love it, but I need to cut it. So just cut it. And what you're going to start with is a piece that is 12 by six. It's half a sheet of a standard 12 by 12 designer series paper piece. I wanted to do it that way because I didn't want to cut it into um, five and a half and have this wonky one, one inch strip in the middle. So I thought, well, what can I do? And what I ended up doing, and you're gonna see, is again, if I kind of orient it this way, I ended up folding the top part. And it, it really does a cool thing. It gives a little bit more of a design and it makes this a little bit stronger. I kept the score lines and we're gonna do this together. I kept them at four and a quarter and eight and a half. And I also did a little trim like we did on the color cardstock. And it's really that simple to take a sheet of six inches high, pay attention to where your um, vertical pattern is. So six inches high by 12. So let's grab our scoring board again. And we're just going to do this. So when you put this in your scoring board, you know that you want to end up with a card that is five and a half inches high. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to score at five and a half. And I'm actually going to turn this over just because I like to score, I like to fold with the, the bump in the inside. So I just turned it over, making sure I have it on the, the right side and I'm going to score this piece at five and a half. And I know you can't see all the way down at the bottom of the scoring board. While I have this in here, I'm going to do exactly what we did on the other card, the one that we did with the cardstock. So I'm going to score at, this is on my 12 inch side, and this is facing, this is gonna be the back of the card. So this is gonna be the way that the card moves. We're gonna score at four and a quarter and eight and a half. Okay, so four and a quarter, eight and a half on the 12 inch side. And then the first score that I did on the six inch side was at five and a half, and this is on the top of the design. So that's where the five and a half is. Let's do a little bit of burnishing and you'll see how this comes together. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to burnish that half inch. I scored at five and a half and it's just gonna make it easier if you do that one first. And that one you want to give a nice little burnish. I think this is just fun because it adds just a really cool finish. And this paper is so different that you'll notice on the first one I did, I got a very different half inch. This has more of a design. I think that's going to be really cool when that's all done. And then I've got my four and a quarter inch score line here. I'm just gonna flip that over. I'm not gluing anything down right now. I'm just getting these score lines to work. In fact, you're gonna see there's very little glue that is involved in putting this together. And when you do this, just try to get things sort of 
even, you know, try to make your scores as nice and clean as you can so things line up. And if they don't, it's fine. So that was my four and a quarter. Now I'm going to go over to the eight and a half, and I'm going to give that a nice little varnish as well. And I'm just lining things up as I go, giving them a really good varnish. So if we think about what we did with the cardstock, you'll remember that when you fold in the right flap and then you fold over that left, it doesn't work really well. Well, we're gonna end up with the same thing here because we've got four and a quarter inches on this end. We've got four and a quarter inches in the middle. We still have this thing coming over. So that means we need to take this sliver off this side. Here's what I recommend that you do when you take the sliver. Just unfold. We haven't, we haven't glued anything yet. And I'm going to take a sliver off of this side. All right, so I'm going to draw my paper trimmer. I'm going to orient it the way that we did the score lines. This is the four and a half. This is the eight and a half. The side with the four and a half, that's where we want to do the sliver. So I want to cut off just a teeny, teeny bit right over here. And to do that, I'm just going to flip this around. It's just easier for me. I'm going to line it up again about where that white starts on the paper trimmer and just cut off teeny, teeny, teeny bit. And then when I put everything together, so I'll fold this back. The right side is going to go in first. The left side is going to go over. Everything is folding really well and it's holding down really nicely. And I just think that's pretty. I think this is so cool with that design up at the top. So the last thing that I'm going to do before I put any embellishments on the card is I'm actually going to fold back part of the front. And you can do this in a lot of different ways. You can put a tick mark up at the top. You're not gonna go all the way down to the bottom. The reason is if you go all the way down to the bottom and make a score line, we're not cutting, we're gonna be scoring because we're gonna fold. Your piece is going to be way too big and it's gonna go over the edge. So you don't want to go much further down or much further beyond. Where's my ruler? Here's my ruler. And I did this first one. Sorry about that. I brought it down to one and three quarters of an inch. You don't even need to do it that way. And I'm gonna show you a different way to tackle this if you want to. I went an inch in on this one and I went an inch and three quarters high on that. If you wanna do that, that's great. You can make a little tick mark and a little tick mark, put it into your paper trimmer and score, don't cut, but score it and then you'll have a score line. Or if you don't want to bother with being that precise, you can actually just fold this. You can figure out about where you want it and just make sure that when you fold it, you're not going beyond the corner, beyond the edge, because that's going to make your card too big to go in the envelope. And I'm just going to wing this one and I'm just going to fold it down. And it's totally up to you. If you want to be super precise, go for it. If you want to just wing it like I did, wing it. And that's going to add, again, a little bit of a break in the color. So we can see that we've got both patterns that are coming together. And I think winging it, I think I got it pretty close. I did. I got it pretty close. I made the angle a little different, but you know what? It's close enough. So right now, all we've done on this six by 12 piece of paper is we have scored, we have burnished, 
and we've done no adhering. Now we're gonna do a teeny, teeny, teeny bit of adhering because you don't need a lot. Where you're gonna need something is when I flip this over from the right, you're gonna need something right in here, right at that little corner. I'm gonna use a glue dot and I'm just going to open that up and I know I need a glue dot over here. So I'm going to grab a glue dot and I'm going to put one here and I may put one more about an inch or so away. I do not need to put any adhesive on the middle part because I will adhere this piece and everything is going to stay where it needs to stay. And one of my little glue dots and you can come off. Here we go. All right. So I put two glue dots. This is the four and a quarter. This is the eight and a half inch score line. I'm gonna go ahead and just press that down. So when I put this card back together, what I just put my glue dots on is right under here. That's gonna hang, that's gonna be fine. It's not gonna come off. That doesn't need any more glue there. The other place I'm gonna put some adhesive is on the piece that I'm folding back because I do want that to lay flat. And once I have this adhered, everything else is just gonna stay put. So you don't need a lot of adhesive on this either. Now you can use glue dots here. I'm gonna use a little bit of Tombow just because I want it to really stay. One thing about designer series paper and liquid glue, you do not want to put a lot of liquid glue on designer series paper. It will buckle, it will show. So make sure that you don't use very much. So this is where I kind of ended up when I decided I'm gonna figure out how to use a six by 12 and make a little fun fold. And then it was, all right, now what do I do? So I decided to kind of break up the color. In this paper, there's a lot going on with color. And I thought bringing back in some white would soften it down, would really help make the colors pop. And since we're dealing with flowers, why not put in some butterflies? And I have two of these left. So I'm going to mimic what I did on the card on the left and just do this really quickly. And the card on the right. The sentiment that I have down here, I'll be very honest with you. I don't remember what stamp set that's from. I picked that out of a little glass that I have on my table here. And I thought it worked well. And I also thought that using a piece of white behind that, which is cut to four and a quarter inches wide. And that's probably, I don't know, let's see. Three quarters of an inch? Yeah, three quarters of an inch in width. So I thought that was a nice little background. Plus it, it adds a, an element when you open it up because you see that entire white piece. But I'm just gonna put on these butterflies real quick. These butterflies are awesome. I know they're not available right now, but they should be back fairly soon. You get quite a few in a package. I like to use a bone folder and just have the wings curl a teeny bit. I'll do the same thing on here. And then I find that the easiest way to get these to go on is actually with glue dots because the if you use if I use glue, which I have on these, I tend to get the glue where I don't want it to be. And I'm just making the body kind of um, stick backwards. I'm going to grab some tiny glue dots and add those on. But if you think about all the designer series paper that you probably have, 
you now have another kind of card that you can pretty easily make. And I have one piece that I need to add to the one that I just did to finish it off after we do these butterflies. And I think they're they're unique. They're pretty quick. And they're ones that you can have for just about any occasion. And all I'm doing here is making sure that when that flap opens, that the butterfly is not in the way and that the butterfly is also within the frame of the card so that it's not going off the corner. And then I'll put this little guy on. The thing that I did not put in this card yet is the basic white piece where I will write my greeting. And I will do that in just a minute. And here I'm gonna put one glue dot on the body and one glue dot a little bit further back on the wing because I just wanna make sure that that wing is going to stay on the card. And then I'll get that positioned. Again, making sure that the flap isn't going to cause a problem and that that butterfly will get him a little bit further down actually. There we go. So I have my two butterflies. The place where I will write my greeting is going to be on the inside back, just like we did on the other card. And just like we did on the other card, I'm going to use basic white. This is four inches wide by five and a quarter. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right in the middle. And again, designer series paper, liquid glue, a little goes a long way. You don't want it to show, you don't want it to buckle. So very thin lines when you're putting things on designer series paper. Yeah, I'll just try and get that a little centered here. So I'm gonna bring out the card that I finished. The only thing that is different between the one that I just did and this is I've added in a piece of basic white at the bottom and then I've put my sentiment using dimensionals right on the top and trying to decide which, which bling I want. I don't think I want the purple. I don't know, the silver would be kind of fun. These are also some of my new favorites. These are the sparkle gems and they're just, they're fun. They've got some really cool colors and I think these might work well. We're going to give this a shot. I like the take your pick tool too because you can sort of figure out how things are going to look before you commit to putting them down. And tuck one right in there. We'll do the law of threes. I also, if I've got a card like this, I like to put at least one on what will be this flap so that when it's opened, you also see something fun in the background. Maybe we'll use a big silver one. Let's find a nice place for that. That looks kind of nice. Right there. And then we'll do one more little gem. I do like these color ones. I think I need a big one though. And let's see. That's nice because that will bring the eye up to the top of the card. So this is my attempt at taking the design on the left, which is gorgeous, 
based in the cardstock and making it a little different and using designer series paper. But the elements are the same. The mechanics of the card work the same. You have less thickness on the right and you can cheat because you use designer series paper throughout. So I hope you give these a try. Again, thanks to Jamie Babarski and her sharing of this design. And I really do hope that you, you try it and that you come up with your own way. I know there's a way to take this and turn it into a landscape version and that would not be hard to do. So enjoy and share what you make.